Hi, I'm Yu. I'll be presenting Old Vest Online, curating a dataset of historical visualizations. This work is done in collaboration with Reike, Wenhan, Yuhen, Tan, Tianhong, Siming, and Xiaoru. Visualization has a long history. There are many famous visualizations created hundreds of years ago, such as Jon Snow's cholera map, Charles Minor's map of Napoleon's Russian campaign, William Playfair's chart of wheat price and wage, and Jack Bertillon's Simak map with pie chart glyphs. We refer to these visualizations created before the computer era as historical visualizations. A handful of famous historical visualizations are repeatedly used in visualization courses. We are curious about two questions. How many historical visualizations have survived to date? Including but not limited to the famous ones. What can we use historical visualizations for? Including but not limited to educational purposes. In this work, we describe our preliminary attempt to answer the two questions. Let's start with the first question. How many historical visualizations have survived to date? To answer this question, we want to find as many historical visualizations as possible. Where to find historical visualizations? We have utilized seven digital libraries and online collections as data sources for collecting them, such as David Ramsey Map Collection, Internet Archive, Gallica, and Library of Congress. Meanwhile, these data sources are not dedicated to historical visualizations. Moreover, they do not share the same data structure. Thus, we have developed Python packages for querying, parsing, and cleaning metadata and images from these data sources. When querying the potential historical visualizations, we use strategies such as searching for synonyms of visualization. From the seven data sources, we obtained a total of over 370,000 images with corresponding metadata. For each image, we store its bibliographic information such as author and published date. The image file properties such as MD5 hash and copyright information such as the copyright status and the data source. Not all the images we obtain from the data sources are historical visualizations. In fact, the majority of them are irrelevant artifacts. Thus, we went through a semi-automatic labeling process. We manually labeled 25,000 images and trained a collection of models to predict the labels of the rest of the images. Then we manually screened the model predictions and correct errors for quality control. We regard visualizations published before 1950 as historical visualizations. The labeling process is conducted in a labeling system we developed. Through this process, we obtained a dataset of 13,000 historical visualization images with corresponding metadata. By now, we have given our preliminary answer to the first question. There are at least 13,000 historical visualizations that have survived to date. We have built an online gallery for browsing the images and metadata. Users may also download the metadata and images with the Python package we developed. Then, what can we use historical visualizations for? How may visualization and history researchers use them? I want to share some interesting usage scenarios that we envision. Firstly, historical visualizations can serve as design resources for inspiring contemporary visualization techniques. Some visualization papers report that historical visualizations inspired the designs. For example, Maurice's schedule chart visualizes the arrival and departure times of trains between Paris and Lyon. Each line corresponds to a train. The horizontal axis represents time, and the vertical axis represents the station on the route. Xu et al.'s paper described adapting Maury's chart to visualize manufacturing process data. They extend Maury's chart to visualize the delay it took products to go through each workstation on an assembly line. Each line corresponds to a product. The vertical axis corresponds to the workstation in the assembly line. Compared with Maury's original design, Xu et al. aggregates polylines into bands to reduce visual clutter. As another example, Owen's mobile is a paper-based interactive chart that can be used to compute the position of celestial bodies. It consists of multiple concentric paper disks. One can rotate the disks to change the date and observe the computed position of the sun and the moon in the zodiac. Stoppo and Bruckner's paper described adapting the Volvo design to visualize volumetric data. They proposed an authoring toolkit to create such volvos with paper and transparent films. There are two particular opportunities for redesigning historical visualizations. First, historical visualizations are mostly static. We may turn them into interactive artifacts. Second, historical visualizations mostly target small datasets. 
we may investigate how to improve their scalability. Another usage scenario is to use historical visualization images as data sources. The original historical records that generate the visualizations may be lost over time. We can recover the historical datasets from the scanned bitmap images of historical visualizations. For example, given a scanned image of William Playfair's line chart on the left, the data table on the right shows the extracted trade balance data. The third usage scenario is to compare different versions of a historical visualization. This task is referred to as textual criticism in textual scholarship. One of the goals of textual criticism is to create a critical addition from the different versions to serve as a gold standard. John Snow's Color Map is a famous visualization commonly used in visualization courses. But do you know how many color cases are actually plotted on Snow's map? Interestingly, we found that there have been different answers to this question in the literature. Some papers suggest the map shows 579 cases, while others suggest it shows 578. Looking into the lineage of the data sources used in the papers, we found the root cause of the difference is the different editions of the color map. In the 1855 edition, there are eight blocks corresponding to color cases in the highlighted area. In the 1936 edition, there are seven blocks corresponding to color cases at the same location. We suspect the difference may be due to a printing defect in the 1936 edition. In this edition, one of the seven blocks are significantly larger than the others, implying that the two blocks may appear as one block because of ink diffusion. In addition to the three usage scenarios I mentioned, you can find more in our paper. Our preliminary answer to the second question is that there are at least six types of usage scenarios. To summarize, we propose a dataset of 13,000 historical visualizations in this work. We use online digital collections as data sources and develop Python packages for data collection and processing. To filter non-visualization images, we carried out a semi-automatic labeling process. We analyzed usage scenarios of historical visualizations such as inspiring contemporary design and extracting historical datasets. You can find our dataset and code in our GitHub organization. Our repositories on GitHub are split into five layers, data querying, data processing, data labeling, dataset, and application. Thank you. That's all for my presentation.